Hello, everyone. Hi, welcome. Come on into my office. I love meeting with you every Wednesday and not just because it's Wellness Wednesday or whatever, but it's just, it seems like a nice time in the week to just take a mini break and see what you've been up to for the last three days. Take a look at where you're going in the next three. Are you prepared? Um, what are some challenges? How can you show up as your best self in the next few days? I just kind of take Wednesdays, and this may not work this way exactly in your schedule, but I just take Wednesdays as sort of that day where I reflect and then I gather up, up and get back on track and move ahead. Um, and usually, you know, I find three days is about all that we as humans can really handle. Three days is, um, you know, a lot can happen in three days and you can really get yourself off track. If you're thinking you only need to check in with yourself once a week, or if you're not checking in with yourself, uh, you're not probably reaching some goals or making some steady improvements in your life. And that's kind of what it's all about, because I dare to find any of y'all who don't don't have ambitions to do um, something more than what you're doing right now, whether that's on your health or your fitness or your um, relationships, your work, your job as a parent or a guardian, whatever you're doing, I'm sure you want to do it better. And I'm sure that you want to, you know, grow into that person that can do all of those things. So that is what I'm going to talk about today. I'm going to talk about not just goal setting. I've been talking about, you know, 90 day goals for a while and how to approach the different aspects of your wellness through um, diet, exercise, productivity, sleep and stress relief, mindset. Today, we are going to talk about the three goals that really matter. And they're probably um, ones that are not on your calendar or not on your to do list. Um, and they should be, they really, really should be. So let's get started with today's wellness workshop, wellness Wednesday workshop. I got my cup of tea here. Um, this morning I'm drinking Earl Grey, an oldie, but a goodie. And, you know, you don't have to, you know, have a question or, or have anything, you know, crazy to say, just say hello. And I miss seeing your faces in my office. And um, for those of you who are working with me one on one in high performance coaching sessions, I miss pouring tea for you. Um, a lot of you have always been um, an online client and rather than an in person client. And so not much has changed in those arenas. But I'm sure I've mentioned to you from time to time that I am pouring a cup of tea while I'm talking to you. And Tea is just magic, I think. It just sort of makes every situation better and it's great to share with a friend. So come in and share a cup with me or get online and share a cup with me. I would love to have you. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. The three goals that really matter. Goals are great. Dreams are great. To-do lists are great. But if you're not working towards these three things, you're really missing out on, on life. And I'm going to share with you what, the, what I think those are. So get ready. Let's bring our focus and our attention back to the present moment. Maybe you'd like to take a few deep breaths in through the nose. Get your breath way, way deep into your chest, like down into your belly, even though that's not physically possible. But And a nice deep exhale, let all of that out. Just bringing your attention back to the present moment facilitates every other moment, every other thing that you have to do. Um, it starts with being and bringing your awareness and your attention to right here, right now, and giving yourself permission to just work on yourself for 20 minutes. Give yourself these few um, you know, moments a day to let go of the outside world and shut it off for a while because it will always be grabbing at you. The outside world will always be saying, hey, over here, do this. I want this. I need this. This needs fixing. That's wrong. And you have to actively say, not right now. 
take a message universe. I'm busy drinking my tea and focusing and breathing <laughs> and the universe will go, okay, no problem. Yeah. Being here now, the most powerful thing that you can do on all fronts. All right. So the question of the day is, have you been focusing on the right goals? What do I mean by that? The right goals. You might have a goal like, you know, um, run a marathon or uh, lose weight or um, earn more money. But have you been focusing on the right goals? Because I guarantee that even though some of those things might be part of your experience or something that you need to do, it's not actually the goal. Losing weight is not the goal. Just losing weight for the sake of losing weight, the sake. That's not ultimately what you're in for. What you're in for is something that's bigger than that. Something that makes you think big picture, takes you out of the, the day-to-day drool, grueling tasks that you have to do. Something that makes you feel alive and purposeful. Absolutely. So the first goal that really matters is your health. What are your health goals? Is there something that you need to improve about your health or that you want to change? And if you're in a physical body, which if you're watching right now, you probably are. (laughs) 99.9% true. Um, If you're in a physical body, you always need to be working on it. There's always some kind of maintenance or upkeep or strengthening or toning or conditioning. Your body always needs a little extra help. Would you agree? So what are your health goals? And again, they may not be, you know, staggering goals here, but they should include something as far as water, nourishment, sleep, and exercise. These things are non-negotiable, basically. You will not be able to do anything well if you are not doing some of these things. And I'm constantly astounded when I ask my coaching clients, how are you doing on sleep? Nobody really knows. They think they know. They look at their Apple Watch and it's like, well, how are you doing on sleep? If you're not tracking it, if you're not actively participating in, in improving it, it's, you're not just someday just going to magically sleep better or exercise more or get the proper nutrients or drink water. Tea counts, by the way. <laughs> and if you're not getting these things, <clears throat> what kind of employee are you? Or what kind of boss are you? What kind of partner are you? Homemaker, parent, friend. Chances are you're not at your best if you don't have these few things in mind, health goals. The next goal is wealth. Yeah, a lot of people have financial goals. That's awesome. A lot of people want to make more money so they can spend more money. They want to make more money so they feel secure, but they don't have a plan for how they're going to do that. They don't have a plan for the money that they have. It's more than just working harder. It's more than just counting up how much money you have. Money is just one part of your wealth. So finances, that's part of your wealth. Knowledge and experience in your field or in your your passions, your pursuits, that's wealth, absolutely. Maintenance. You might have to spend some money to put in on the life that you have and invest back in your vehicles, <laughs> your body, your home, your business. But you get something out of it when you put back in. That's another form of wealth. And then generosity. 
the more you give, the more you will have to give. Um, that was on a fortune cookie last night, literally at my brother's house. The more you give, the more you will have, you will have to give. Absolutely. And generosity, when we tap into abundance, it's more than just money. You can be generous of spirit, generous of time, generous of care or emotion, generous of money. They're all currency. They're all forms of energy. And you have to have that flow. Wealth is something that can grow, but it's not, it's something that you can't really sit on very long. It's something you have to share. All right. Health, wealth. Any guesses on goal number three? Anyone, anyone? Happiness. Is happiness on your calendar? Where have you blocked out time for happiness? It's an active thing. It doesn't just come. It doesn't just go, oh, happiness is here. I forgot I ordered it. You have to consciously generate it every day. So one way to do that is with stress relief practices like yoga or breathing or um, essential oils or meditation or um, hot baths or showers or spa treatments or um, sleep. <laughs> Happiness is also cultivated through family and social activity, whether that's in person or online, it absolutely adds to our sense of well-being and happiness. Having fun in nature, doing a little bit of recreating, that certainly brings happiness to me, even if it's just a short walk in nature. It always seems to give you what you need. It's very grounding and clears your energy field making a difference in someone's life. That contributes to your own happiness when you give outwardly, make a difference, show up to serve. Makes you feel good. Now that's not to say that you should be anybody's doormat. That's a different conversation. But these things we have to actively engage. Whatever brings you happiness, true happiness without self-destructive qualities, Again, that's another, that's a whole nother uh, conversation. The universe wants you to be happy. It wants to experience your happiness. And when you're happy, it, it's kind of, you know, a ripple effect, right? Health, wealth, and happiness. Pretty important. So I want you to take those three things and look at your weekly plan. Where are you? making efforts towards those three goals. And yeah, maybe your to-do list helps you to be happier. Maybe your to-do list makes you money. Maybe your to-do list has things on it that are exercise or health related. But it's not just about losing weight. Losing weight in itself is not gonna necessarily make you happier. It's not necessarily going to make you wealthier. It's not necessarily going to make you healthier, although that it, it might, it probably will. But the, the weight loss isn't going to make you happy. There's something else about it that's crucial in there. So that's why we need to create goals with a purpose. Sure, it's great to lose 20 pounds if you can or, you know, need to, um, but you have to have a why behind it. Why am I doing this? So for instance, for your health goals, you first need a purpose. So I need to be able to keep up with my kids at Disneyland or my grandkids at Disneyland when Disneyland opens up again for all of us. So your strategy is to walk 10,000 steps per day and take some vitamins. I just you know, threw that out there as an example. Purpose and a strategy. My wealth goals, the purpose is to afford the Disneyland vacation someday when we're all allowed to go again. It's still there for us, I promise you. And the strategy is to save $500 per month by not going out to eat. Purpose, strategy. And then for your happiness goals, 
your purpose could be something um, related on this Disneyland kick. Be relaxed and present when I go to Disneyland. I'm not worried about the money that it took or I'm not cranky because I can't do the legwork. I wanna be relaxed and present. That would make me happier. And the strategy is to learn to enjoy the little moments and turn off distractions, mindfulness, meditation, emotional processing, pattern resolution, all of those things, health, wealth, and happiness. You see how they're all connected, right? If you can be healthier because you want, you have that Disneyland purpose, right? It's not just to be healthier for the sake of being healthier. That doesn't work. It's not enough. And then the wealth goal can also feed into making me healthier because I'm not going out to eat. And if I have a little more money and I feel a little bit better, I'm going to be happier. They all kind of snowball on each other. You with me? So when you're putting it all together, purpose, strategy, a couple of, a great practice to use is gratitude. Having gratitude for your health. That's where it begins. I'm grateful that I can get out of bed today to practice those 10,000 steps so that someday when I get to Disneyland, I'll be ready. Show appreciation for your body, however it is today. Move forward from there. That's where it starts. You, you will not take care of yourself if you're hating on yourself. Be thankful that you can walk or run or bike ride or just get out of bed. That's awesome. And know that you can get healthier today. I'm so thankful that my body will take the next right choice that I make and be nourished by it. I know I can do it today. And then having gratitude for your wealth. No matter what the bank account says, your wealth is not just about your financial situation. So whatever you have right now, whether it's a dollar or a million dollars, be thankful for what you have. It has to start there. And again, not just about money, resources, knowledge, time can be a wealth. Be thankful for what the universe is going to give you in the future. Mm -hmm. Be thankful and ready to receive. Ready to receive resources, ready to receive support, ready to receive opportunities. It's not just about receiving money. Money is just one form of currency, one form of energy. And then show gratitude for your happiness. It, again, it's something that you have to generate. You have to tap into it with tools and techniques like meditation or inspirational reading or podcasts or maybe exercise, spending time with family, breathing techniques, hobbies. And then share your happiness about the present moment. Drop the judgment about how, you know, well, it could be better or it could be worse. You got to drop the should in all of that in order to be happier. Health, wealth, and happiness. Showing gratitude, living with purpose, and creating strategies to get yourself to those things. So I want you to look at your calendar and I want you to see what of the things that are on my calendar are contributing to my health, wealth, and happiness? And if they are not, which I challenge you to find how they really are, but if they're not, get rid of them. And if they're ones that they have to be on your calendar, but you don't see how they fit, how can you have a bigger purpose? How can this tie into some of your goals? How can you reframe your thinking so that you're moving forward and actually cultivating the things that are missing? This is just one type of practice of looking at what's important in your life and making decisions according to those goals rather than, well, I shouldn't eat this chocolate cake because, um, you know, I have this, this goal to lose 30 pounds 
someday. And it's like, well, but if the chocolate cake is going to make you happy um, and, and make it positive for you to go through the rest of the day, and it's not going to be, turn into something self-destructive where you're hoarding cake or um, binging on cake, but eat the piece of chocolate cake. Life's too short, right? So finding your middle ground in all of this is really the secret. Um, Cause there are certainly some things that you're gonna have to do that maybe don't make you happy on the surface. But I betcha if you thought about it in a different perspective, you could find that, that real purpose and meaning in it. And if not, bring it, create it, live it for sure. All right, ladies, that's what I have for you today. I'm so glad you could join me. Um, please feel free to message me with your questions. Um, I love getting your messages, so keep them coming. It's awesome to hear from each and every one of you. And I will do my best to answer whatever you, whatever you got or point you in the right direction. Really, the answers um, come from it, within you and Google, right? <laughs> sort of, sort of. But I'm happy to help you along the way and put some of those puzzle pieces together because it's not easy to translate all of the you know, messages from the universe and the tools that we have at our disposal and put them all together um, to make you know, the, the right wellness plan for yourself. So if you like what you saw and you want to hear more, please go over to my webpage, vickywhitking.com. Sign up for my newsletter so that we can always stay in touch. I'm going to let you know about upcoming Wellness Wednesdays. I'm going to be doing some live tarot readings. I'm going to be doing some healing corner updates and talking about my coaching practice just a little bit more in depth. I'm going to be giving you some basic Wellness 101 training, so you won't want to miss out on any of that. And I want to see you back here next week. I'm going to talk about mindset and self-sabotage. So don't miss out. Until then, be well and thanks for joining me.